Okay, so today's lesson is going to be about using classic tweens. You've been given an example of a character. I'll show you exactly what's in that file in just a moment. But here's what our ending result will be. I've got a version with an ending result. So if I play this on my version, okay, we've got the, we've got the character, we've got this monkey. Uh, he kind of like waves at you and he shows you this is your future. So um, he's just doing stuff, he's moving around. And uh, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to animate a character. Now, this is working with classic tweens. And the big idea is that when you use this style of animation instead of a motion tween, you have a lot of control. You draw a character, and you're able to then animate all the pieces of the character. Now, this is a humanoid, bipedal type of character, walking on two legs. It's got arms and you know a head and a body and all of that notice for a moment he kind of like leans over for a moment and then he waves at you and then he takes out his good luck charm so this is working in that as it plays over and over you might see well you know when he waves at you that's his hand his his hand waving at you like that and then his arm starts off as a uh, on his hip and then it moves up like that so that's movement of just the hand and then the other hand he goes behind his back and then takes out his Good luck charm. So this is using classic tweening. Remember we talked about that tweening is what's ha what happens in between a pose. There is a pose, first of all, where he's just with his hands on his hips and his arm moves up. Well, there's the starting point of the hand on the hip and then the ending point of the hand up. In between, something has to get animated. That's the idea of a tween. Here we're going to use classic tweens. Same thing with the other hand. It starts off in a certain way, and it ends a certain way. And in between, there's some sort of animation. That's what we're going to work with um, to, cre to create our version of this. So that's the end result. The one that you got a copy of. So you need to open it, and then we'll do File Save As, and put your last name on it. Usually when we do these lessons, you don't need to turn it in, but if you want to show me the result to give you feedback, that's fine. But usually it's just going to be your actual work that you need to turn in. So go ahead and save with your last name. And I'm going to, remember we want to usually reset our workspace. Window, workspace, essentials. Workspace Essentials. And if you notice on the timeline, you've got a huge number of layers. So if you pull that timeline up, you see a lot of layers. And they're all named pretty meaningfully. If you can't see the full name, remember you can pull the edge out like that. But this type of animation really relies on breaking apart a complex thing into multiple pieces. And so every piece of that character is broken down. I see monkey legs, monkey mouth, monkey head, etc. Even the arms are made up of a variety of pieces, aren't they? There's the actual hand. Now they called it forearm and arm. I would have called it top of arm and bottom of arm. But if you click on a particular piece, if I click like at the top of the arm over here, it highlights that that's monkey arm L for left. And then the other piece of it, that's monkey forearm L. And then finally the hand is monkey arm, or what, what do they call it? They call it monkey hand L. So each one of these pieces of your character that you're going to animate needs to be on its own layer and its own symbol. We'll see how to do that in a moment. But the idea also is that depending what you want to animate, it should be broken into its own piece, into, into its own layer. The feet, basically the whole thing, is one big symbol. It doesn't, it isn't further broken down into left leg, right leg, left knee, right knee, or, or whatever. Those parts aren't going to animate. So when you do your own animation, Think about what parts you want to move, and those are the parts that need to be broken up. OK, and what I mean by broken up, let's look at the library. Let's look at the library of this project. 
And further here, you see all of the separate pieces. Like the body is just a blob of color right there. And then foot. One foot is used and then copied and flipped. So one symbol for both feet. There is the hand. There's a hand holding the skull in a couple of positions. There's the head itself. That looks pretty freaky right there without a mouth. Uh, but there's that part, so if they also wanted to animate the mouth moving and stuff, that should be its own thing, its own symbol. And then we've got lower right, lower left, etc. So all the pieces. If you double click to open monkey head, you can open that one, double click it in the library there. That is further made out of sub layers inside of the symbol. These should have been named, but if you kind of like turn them on and off for a moment, you see like layer two, for example, is the little highlight, the specular highlight in the eye. Uh, what's that one? There's the nose and so forth. So obviously this would have been better to have them named properly because I have to turn them on and off to see what's where. But um, this is another thing to think about. You could create a piece of your drawing and then Inside of the drawing, you can have multiple layers, and that can have the filters, and that can have the drawing and such. Uh, to return back to the main part of the, of the software, right now, it, on the top left, it shows us you're inside editing the movie symbol, Monkey Head. To go back, if you click that back button, it goes back to the main scene, the main stage. We'll talk about scenes and the camera and other stuff later. But that's how this file is given to you at the moment. It already did the hard work of drawing it, making it, these pieces into symbols, and then putting each symbol in its own layer. It already did that for you, but we'll do a little bit of practice with that a little later um, after we do this part of the lesson. So when you're doing your own animation, it's in the instructions, but you're going to need to do that. You're going to need to draw your character. You're going to need to separate what you want to animate into its own layer and symbol. Uh, and then we'll be able to do these tweenings. So does that make sense what this file is so far before we start animating? Any questions so far? Okay, so uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to see it all like that. I see all my timeline there. Again, my screen's a little different than yours, so things might be a little bit more cramped on mine. But here's what we need to do first of all. Just like in real life, uh, me, as a human, as far as you know, I am full of bones, and then we've got muscles and all of that stuff that connects my body so that when I move my hand like this, well, my hand is moving, but so is my wrist area on the top of my hand right here. So all of this is connected, right? At the moment, this, uh, this character is not connected in terms of if I click to move that hand, okay, well, just the hand moves. What we need to do is sort of create a, uh, a skeletal system, in a way. We need to show that this hand is connected to this part of the arm, and that that part of the arm is connected to the top part of the arm, and that that's connected to the body. So that if you move the body, the hands also move. Right now, everything moves independently. If you move the hand, it should then also move the rest of the arm. This is called layer parenting. And here's how we do this. Notice in your layers here, each one is named. You have a bunch of icons here. We've seen lock. We've seen hide. Uh, have you ever tried clicking on the little icon of that color? If you click on that, it shows you your, it shows you the outlines of your drawing. So turning that on or off shows you here are the edges of the thing. It shows it to you without the colors in the thing. That might be very useful when you're drawing and you're trying to fill in your color and it just doesn't fill in. There might be a gap somewhere that you don't see. If you change your mode to your layer to show outlines, it should then show you exactly, oh, you have a gap right here. So sometimes when it's filled in with color or you have a thick stroke, uh, you don't see the, those edges. So that outline could be useful. Okay, within this area, we have a little icon here that to me looks like some sort of organizational chart, like 
here's the president and the vice president and the speaker of the house. And it looks like some organizational chart. Um, if you hover your mouse over that, it, it tells you that this is the parenting view. So click on that one time and you see how it activates. What also happens is like the layer kind of expands a little bit down there. So you can turn that on or off. Let's turn it on. And now it gives us an area here where we can start to connect things together. That the hand is connected to the bottom part of the arm and the arm is connected to the top part. And the way we do that is by dragging the little color uh, square to the next one. And what we always want to do is start with like the ending piece of the skeleton and connect it back to the previous piece and the previous piece and the previous piece. So we have a parent element, a child element, a child element, a child element. So if we look here, where do we have, okay, here's the hand. The hand should connect to the forearm, which then connects to the arm. Okay, watch how we do this. You grab the little square, you click it and drag it, and connect it with the other square. So now you see that, that it shows, okay, your right hand is now connected to your right forearm. Just pull this out a little bit more to read the names. Let me undo that again. Again, you grab it by the little color square, and then drag it to the next color square. And what happens now is if I try to move that hand, it will be connected to the previous piece once we do the full animation, because it's eventually going to move up and down um, like that. See? So. A moment ago, if you tried to move only that forearm, it would only move the forearm. But now when I move the forearm, I've got a child element, a child layer. So the hand also moves. Forearm is connected to the main arm. So then now I'm going to drag the square to the top part of the arm. So from this one down to that one. And now it shows, okay, that one's connected to that one, and that one's connected to that one. And so if I move this top parent element, the whole thing, the whole thing moves. If I move the bottom piece, it's connected there. And if I move the bottom most piece, well, that doesn't have any child, any children, any dependents, so nothing else moves. You should have something that looks like this. We have this connected to that. Let's do the same thing with the other, with the other hand, the other arm. Uh, you need to have that left hand connect to the left forearm, and then the left forearm connected to the left main arm. So try that. In a sense, what we are sort of doing is rigging the model, uh, terminology from other software, but we are creating a skeletal system in a sense. We are creating a relationship between this one thing and another thing. Okay, so now I've got that that left arm is connected to the pieces of the left arm. And the order of the layers still matters because looking at it from top to bottom, we have hand on top, then forearm, then arm. And if I move, for example, hand below arm, I'll, I'll undo that to show you. You see here now, I've got the fur of the hand, of the arm, on top of the hand. Because in the order before, I had the hand on top of the arm. Undo that. You see here, I've got the hand on top of the arm, which looked fine, but there was fur drawn on the hand, which should be covering the hand. So just moving the order below, like that, will do that. And then like the forearm as well. So they're still connected. The arm's connected to the forearm, and the forearm's connected to the hand. But now the order of it is that, well, now it makes more sense looks like it makes more sense. And you can do the same thing with the other one. Um, I would want it sort of in, in this order in terms of oops, 
now here uh, move the um, the name of the layer not the connection so right here to right here so right now these things are starting to connect and let's say I want to disconnect I don't need this thing connected anymore if you click one time on the spot where you set up your connections you get a variety of options depending what you want to do if I start at the very most end piece the uh, the, the final child piece if I click on that uh, you can change it to attach it to something else you can remove the parent the previous piece uh, you can go to the previous parent element and as you go kind of back through that hierarchy you'll see different options so connecting this with that, adding this to that. Sometimes you need to remove these items, and it's all available from that selection there. OK, next we've got uh, legs, mouth, head, and body. Well, the arms, I want the arms connected to the body. Right? We've got these arms that I want to connect to the body. So you're going to grab arm R and drag it to the body, and then arm L, and drag it to the body. So you're going to see all these like wiggly lines, what's connecting with what. It should make sense what's going on there. Now if I move the body, all of the pieces attached to the body also move. The head doesn't move yet. It's not attached. The lower body doesn't move yet. It's not attached. So we want mouth as a child or connected to head. So now when I move the head, the mouth moves. If those were not connected, if I move the head, then you get that nightmare fuel right there. So make sure that the pieces are connected, mouth, uh, the mouth to the head. And remember, always, always go from the child, the final piece, to the main piece. You might have thought, OK, I'll connect the head to the mouth. That'll cause different types of animations that you don't expect. Always think about connecting child to parent, like in the hand. The hand connects to the arm. The mouth connects to the head. So then the head connects to the body. So connect that there. Connect that there. And we have legs. I'm connecting the leg to the main, the main body now. Okay, so you should end up something like this. There should not be any stray layer that is not connected to anything. Ultimately, everything connects back to the body. Does that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help? So when you do your own animation for your own character, you're going to need to do something like that as well. Right here, again, their legs are not moving, so they're not separated into their own layers but if they were then left leg right leg connected back to the lower body and then lower body connected to the upper body however complex you want to be uh, as a beginner and within our time limits you might not want to try to do an amazingly huge complicated thing i'm not looking for that i'm looking that you're able to do your drawing separated into objects and layers and then connect it and so forth okay well let's start animating this um, I want to add I want to add up to a hundred frames for all of these pieces. In between one and a hundred, I'm going to animate various pieces of this thing. And so I want to set myself up by adding up to a hundred, which is about four seconds. I want to add about a hundred frames to all of these layers. Now, the slow way to do this would be to go to frame 100 of every layer and press F5 and F5. But we don't need the slow way. We want the fast way. The fast way is to select at frame 100 
all the way down, like that, and then press F5. And that will fill in from frame 1 to 100 on every layer, 100 frames, 100 possible frames of animation. So sometimes you'll need for an individual layer to add more frames, so you press F5. And sometimes you need to do multiple at once, so you can click and drag to select multiple at once and then press F5. So at frame 100 for all layers, I have, with F5 I have frames. The final, um, the final frame icon looks like that. It's not a keyframe, it's just a frame. Remember, a regular old frame means nothing changes. When you have a keyframe, something changes. Nothing's changing yet. Okay, let's go back to frame 10 in the forearm R layer, frame 10. Pull that out a little bit, it's cutting it off. Right there. So I want to start moving his right arm. And it's made out of the hand and the forearm and the top part. Uh, right now he has his hand down like this. So I want to move this part of the arm out over here. So this is the part that's going to move, which is going to bring the hand along with it. OK, so that's why we, we're, we're, we're on the forearm right layer. Let's press F6 to add a keyframe. We're going to start to make a change. On frame 15, on the same layer, let's add another F6. So basically, wherever you're going to make a change in your elements, you need a keyframe, which is F6. Frame 10 and frame 15 of the forearm R. Let me zoom in again right here. So forearm R, you need an F6 on 10 and 15. What we're going to do is, on that arm right there that's selected, we're going to rotate it outward using the free transform tool this particular object we can move it around of course or we can rotate it now this one was already set up in that the hinge the rotation point is right at where the arm is at when you create your own symbols your rotation point will be at the center. So if you try to rotate it, it's going to rotate from the center when you create yours. This one's already set up to rotate from the joint. And the way you do that is, you see there's your object. It's got that little rotation point in the center, and you put this where you want the rotation to be at, probably up here. Again, it's already there for us in this project. When you do your own, your rotation is going to be in the center probably want to move that to somewhere where the joint is at. And then now I can rotate it out. When you move that rotation point, sometimes it doesn't move to exactly where you need it because you might have snapping turned on. Remember snapping, view, snapping, and you might want to turn some of these off sometimes. Snap to object, for example trying to rotate it in a specific way, but it keeps jumping to the wrong spot, you might turn off view, snapping, and probably snap to object. So I can move that rotation point wherever I want. For the moment, I want to move it out like that. If I move back to frame 10, the arm is down. If I move to 15, the arm is out. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm setting up these keyframes. Arm is down, arm is up. And then we'll apply a tween so that it animates it in between for us. So in between the two keyframes, right click, create classic tween. So 
in between, anywhere between 10 and 15, right click, create classic tune. You get this uh, purple color on the timeline with an arrow saying, we've animated it for you from this piece to this piece. And then if you scrub the playhead, if you move the playhead over like that, it does it for you. Now instead of just appearing at the bottom and then at the top, it animates it for us. If you press the play button, it shows it to you. Actually, my play button's cut off. It's right over here. If you press Enter, that's the same thing as the play button. Mine's cut off. But if you press Enter, it then animates it. You press Enter to stop the, start the animation. Press Enter to stop it. This is like a quick way to test it. Obviously, the other way to test it, if you press the play button at the top over there, then it does it here. So it's paused for a long time, then it starts over. But if you press Enter, it goes like that. So one of the things about animation is based on the number of frames you have, that determines your speed. Right now, I kind of feel that the arm is moving too fast. Maybe I want that, maybe I don't. Maybe I want the arm to glide up a little slower. Well, the reason it's at a certain speed is because I've used five frames, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I've used five frame, or six frames to do the animation. If I added more frames, it would be slower. If I added less frames, it would be faster. So don't do this, but watch this. If I move this frame to happen way out over here, now I'm going to have an animation take, what is that, 20 frames. So when I play that, it moves up way slower. So the more frames in between a keyframe, the slower an animation is. The less frames between keyframes, the faster it is. So don't do this yet. But if I move this one closer and then play it really fast, you don't even see an animation really. It just happens so fast. So just to kind of see this, I do want it to be only five frames. But to, to try this out, this is also the tricky part of using the software, click one time to select the keyframe on frame 15 to select it and then move it to like 40 or whatever. If you try to click and drag, it's going to make a selection, which is different. If you click one time to select and then move it, then it does what you want, which is to give you more time between your tween, and therefore it animates slower. I only want to keep it at those five frames that I'm just showing you here. When you do your own thing and it's like, why is this so fast? Why is this so slow? It depends on how many frames you have between the tweens, between, between the keyframes. So there's your mantra. Less frames, faster. More frames, slower. And the more you do it, the more you'll remember. But when you undo that, we only need five frames at the moment. So we have the hand moving up relatively fast, but not so slow that it uh, not so fast or so slow that it takes this amount of time. So uh, go ahead and save that. Remember, you want to be saving every once in a while to um, in case this crashes. Okay, the next thing I want to do is have it wave at you. So that's going to be the part of the actual hand that's going to do the waving. So on the hand layer, hand R, after the hand moves up, I then want to, I then want to start to animate the hand. So on frame 15 of the hand R, we'll put in a new keyframe, F6. On frame 18, we'll put a keyframe, F6. And then on frame 20, F6. So that's going to be three changes, basically. And a waving hand is like that. It's going to wave at you. I guess you want to do it that way. It's going to wave at you. So that means that the hand starts at a certain point right there. It waves down, and it comes back up. So frame 18 is where then I will rotate it. down 
So it's up, then it waves down, and then it comes back. And then I want to tween it in between so that it makes it smooth. Right now it just sort of appears. There, there, it appears. Um, I want it to animate it for me. So in between, in between these two keyframes, right click, create classic tween. In between these two keyframes, right click, create, create classic tween. So it'll animate for us going down from here to here. And then it'll animate for us going back up from here to here. Create classic tween, create classic tween. When you play that, it gives you like a quick wave. Obviously, if you do it for more time, it lasts longer. What if I move it instead of frame 20, frame 22? So to kind of practice playing it over and over, what I like to do is I have my hand ready. So I'm right-handed. I have my hand on the mouse. And then on my left hand, I have it on Enter. So I can then quickly, you know, I jump back to frame 15, press Enter, press Enter, you know, to kind of start it and stop it. And then click where I need to start the animation and play it with Enter, and then go back and forth. Kind of a little practice there. You can also scrub it back and forth. But this is not an accurate way, because you might move it too fast, and you don't get the sense of how it really is moving. You do want it to play at the 24 frames per second, which is pressing Enter. Or remember previewing it up on the uh, test movie up on top. That's it there so far. There's a lot of pause at the end because we still have more to animate. But then it moves up and then it waves. Right now, the, the hand moves up and then starts to wave right away. I don't want that. I want it to move up, pause for a little moment, and then wave. Well, according to the frames that I made here, have the, hand, have the arm move, and then right away, wave. I, want, I don't want to start this hand movement until frame 20. So I want to move this. We've seen that if we start, if we click on a frame and move it, okay, it'll move it. But I need to move a chunk of animation. No problem. You need to make a selection. That's when you click and drag. If you click one time, it selects. When you click and drag, you make a, a folder selection. So now that I've selected all of those keyframes plus the tween, then I can move the whole thing over to 20. And I have it that the arm moves, little pause, then the hand moves. So now when I play this, movement, little pause, then a wave. So once again on that, if you click one time, it selects. If you click and drag, you make a multi-frame selection. Then when you've got the multi-frame, move it to 20. Okay, so his arm went up, he waved at you. After the wave, I want the arm to go back to the hip. So to make that arm go back down to the hip, it's the part of the forearm that I need to animate back down. So we've got the forearm moving up, waving, and let's say on frame 28, we're gonna start a new movement, so F6. <clears throat> And we'll go to frame 33, F6. 
So we always need a keyframe to attach a classic tween, a starting point and an ending point. My ending point here is to rotate the hand back down. So it's, it started at the hip and moved outwards. It waved, then it's going to start outwards and move back in. So in between that, classic tween. So now when I play that, it goes back. So the the actual like exact frames don't don't matter. Um, in like was that thirty six or thirty seven? Either or because you're going to get a starting and ending result at the very least. Then how fast or how slow, that's when it matters how much frames or how few frames. OK, let's say we, we're going to move the main body as well. Um, as we get more advanced in animation, and we'll cover this a lot more in part two of the class, CIS 126, there's, a, there's a, I believe it's the 12 principles of animation, 12, 13, something like that, that if you follow as many of these rules as you can, you will make some really good animations, because the animation can mimic the real world. There's a bunch of rules. We'll get to that eventually. Uh, one of the things about that is that there is, when something moves, it's usually something else is also moving. Right now, when I move my hand out like this, it was also moving my clothes. So it wouldn't just be that the actual hand moves, the clothes would move. Now, I'm not going to make like clothes moving at the moment, but I'm going to say that the, the main character's body is also moving. Because like, I might move my hand out like that, but my body is also moving, kind of subconsciously. I'm trying to move my hand only, but maybe also my body moves a little bit. So we're going to have the body move slightly as well. That one is monkey body. On the monkey body layer, let's add uh, a keyframe on frame 20, and then a keyframe on frame 35. So remember, keyframes. There's some sort of movement or change. It's going to start with the body upright. It's going to rotate a little bit or move a little bit, and then move back to the starting point. That's why we kind of have been doing it in groups of two or three. It starts at a certain point. It moves to something else. You know, it started here. It ended here. It went back to this. This one is it started here, and then it moved here. This one is starts straight up, moves over a little bit, moves back. So wherever there's going to be any movement, you need keyframes. What I want to do on frame 20 is rotate the body a little bit over to, over to the left a little bit. Actually, body, hmm, OK, wait a minute. We didn't actually need to connect the legs at the moment. OK, we'll fix that one moment. Uh, what I'm saying here is before we do this, if I try to, ro I wanted to rotate only the upper body, but the whole thing's going to move. So whoops, we made an extra connection that we didn't really need. So before we move the body, we need to detach the legs from the body. So legs are currently connected to the body. You can click on the empty space next to the parent, uh, the parent uh, layer right here. Click that and say remove parent. Detach it. They should just call it detach, I guess. But we, we accidentally connected a little too much. If we also wanted the legs to be doing their own animations and stuff, OK, then we should have connected it. But we only want to uh, animate the arms and the upper body. So let's go back here and remove the, leg, the legs from the body. Because what I'm trying to do is just, re just rotate the top, the top body like that. See, he's doing a, a hot new dance on Fortnite. 
Does anyone still play that? Moving on. So um, I've got here the I've got the uh, the body upright, the body rotated a little bit, and the body back to upright. Well, that means I need to tween, classic tween, from here to here, and then from here to here. So he's got a little bit of a um, rotation at the same time that he waves. So if I had still the body connected to the legs, the whole thing would rotate. In this case, I didn't want that. Okay, so this is the project so far. There's still more to do, of course. Um, but let's take our first break. Let's confirm that this is all working. If you need help, you can call us over. Let's see it's working this far. We'll take our break. When we come back, we'll start to animate the other hand. We can do some other stuff. So it's uh, 1.55. We'll take a break until 2.05, 10 minute break. Make sure you come back on time. I do start on time. We'll be back in a moment. And then we'll go on.